This Week on ICN. The stories you should have heard, but didn't. Did you consent to give the government your baby's DNA? Police want easier access to your emails. U.S. Army report recommends a new stability protection force inside the United States. Those stories and more next on Informed Citizen News. Hello and welcome to ICN, Informed Citizen News, February 7, 2010. Does the government have your baby's DNA on file? Newborn baby DNA samples are stored in government labs from three months to indefinitely, depending on the state. How can this be? It's simple, according to Brad Threll, director of the National Newborn Screening and Genetics Resource Center. Newborn babies in the United States are routinely screened for a panel of genetic diseases. Since the testing is mandated by the government, it's often done without the parent's consent. Parents in Texas and Minnesota have filed lawsuits. And those parents' concerns are sparking a new debate about whether it's appropriate for a baby's genetic blueprint to be in the government's possession. The DNA specimens don't always stay in the state labs. They're often given to outside researchers, sometimes with the baby's name attached. According to the state of Minnesota's website, samples are kept so that tests can be repeated if necessary and, in case the DNA is ever needed, to help parents identify a missing or deceased child. California, as an example, collects DNA from 99.6% of newborns, which is about 550,000 babies each year. They keep the DNA on file indefinitely. One Super Bowl commercial was of particular note. Audi produced an ad with the theme of Green Police, a satirical look at environmental policing watching everyone and arresting anyone who preferred plastic bags at the supermarket, tossed away a battery, or even the dregs of society who chose an incandescent light bulb. Audi offered up the commercial to advertise their new clean-burning diesel car. Did Audi provide an outlandish satire, or did we get a glimpse of our future? Residents of King, North Carolina felt the heavy hand of government when a snow day startled the King Town Council into declaring a state of emergency. Under North Carolina law, when a state of emergency is put into place, it initiates a ban on driving, the sale of alcohol and firearms, and prohibits the carrying of firearms everywhere but in your own home. A clear example of suspending constitutional rights under a so-called declaration of emergency, which also installed a curfew. Many residents were outraged and called the chief of police to complain about the restrictions. According to CNET Online, police are pushing for the creation of a national web interface linking police computers with those of internet and email providers in order to have faster access to personal communications. Some companies have already police-only web interfaces. Sprint Nextel operates what it calls the L-Site also known as the Legal Compliance Secure Web Portal. The company has even offered a course that will teach police how to create and track legal demands through LSight. Cox Communications makes its price list for complying with police requests public. A 30-day wiretap is just $30,500. Your personal information for sale and getting easier for government to access. The European Court of Justice has told Sweden that it must implement a 2006 measure requiring telecom operators to store information about their customers' phone calls and emails. The European Union Directive, known as the Data Retention Directive, was approved by Brussels in March 2006, but Sweden has yet to implement the measure more than three years after its passage. Note that the inference is that every other EU country has already implemented the requirement. Swedish Justice Minister Beatrice Ask said, It's no secret that I wasn't very fond of the proposal when it was initiated, and I think there is good reason to exercise a certain amount of caution when it comes to gathering information. The Justice Minister also said that she would not be preparing a legal proposal to comply with the order until after the fall election. Sweden trying to maintain some sovereignty, but it may be too little and too late. The London Evening Standard reported that David Kelly's autopsy reports will be sealed for 70 years. Dr. Kelly's body was found in the woods close to his Oxfordshire home in 2003. 
shortly after it was revealed that he was the source of a BBC report. Casting doubt on the government's claim that Iraq had weapons of mass destruction capable of being fired within 45 minutes. Lord Hutton, who chaired the inquiry into Kelly's death, issued a report in 2004 that concluded Dr. Kelly killed himself by cutting an artery in his wrist. But the finding has been challenged by doctors who claim that the weapons inspector's stated injuries were not serious enough. The skeptical doctors requesting access to the medical records claim that if all the evidence was supposedly aired in public, then there's no reason the report supporting suicide should be kept secret for 70 years. The U.S. Army commissioned a study by the RAND Corporation to analyze the feasibility of a new military and law enforcement unit, which could be put to use domestically and internationally to take charge of riot control and SWAT duties. The report specifically states the purpose of this new stability police force is to establish basic law and order, as well as defeat and deter criminal organizations, terrorists, and insurgents. The recommendation in the report is that this new unit reside under the U.S. Marshal's Office so that the stability police force would be able to perform civilian police tasks in the United States. As a follow-up to the Continental Congress meeting we covered late last year, delegates met for 10 days in October 2009 to discuss and debate the state of our constitutional republic. The conclusion of their efforts and their recommended course of action to restore and maintain constitutional obedience in America is a document called Articles of Freedom. This document is now available to read at articlesoffreedom.us. There is also a link in the More Info section of this video. In an interesting Rasmussen poll, only 11% of American adults think the nation needs to increase its deficit spending at this time. Rejection of Keynesian economics is found across demographic and partisan lines. Republicans and those not affiliated with either major party overwhelmingly reject the notion that increasing the deficit is the right prescription in a difficult economy. Among Democrats, 21% agree with the Keynesian approach, 47% do not. These figures highlight a massive failure of leadership from both Republicans and Democrats among the nation's political elite, says Scott Rasmussen, president of Rasmussen Reports. Rasmussen continues, given the amount of political chatter about the budget in recent years, it is almost beyond comprehension that neither party has seen fit to highlight the basics so that the American people can make reasoned choices on the fundamental issues before them. What Rasmussen fails to recognize, and as political analyst Pat Cadell aptly points out, the political class is grimly determined to preserve the primacy of their power. Newsweek reported that studies actually showed 75% of the effectiveness of antidepressants is due to the placebo effect. The Cornerstone study by Irving Kirsch in 1998, and now others, conclude that the lion's share of the drug's effect comes from the fact that patients expect to be helped by them, and not from any direct chemical action on the brain, especially for anything short of very severe depression. Question is, why did it take 12 years after the study for this to become public knowledge? Thanks for joining us this week. Get more people informed by sending a link of our channel to your friends and family. From all of us at Informed Citizen News, see you next time.